Oh, look at all these beautiful people watching my video. It just warms my heart. Just before we begin, I would like to announce the new Falcon Discord server, where you can chat with other fans or with me. Mainly just me, because there's only one guy on there right now, so... I also announce when new videos are coming out over there, so you can stay on top of everything. No Patreon needed. So, thanks for all your guys' support. It's been really helping me get motivated these past few days. And let's get on with the video. By now, sentry turrets are all freaking over the place. They're up there with explosive barrels when it comes to how common they are throughout video games. From Portal 2, Team Fortress 2, Overwatch. Sometimes they are even in games that people wouldn't really call shooters, like Slime Rancher. You can build these little water turrets, it's, it's great. So this begs the question, what makes a good sentry turret? Well, to figure that out, we're going to have to know what a sentry turret even is. I believe that there is a difference between a turret and a sentry. Hear me out. The Webster Dictionary defines sentry as guard. Watch, like a verb. And the turret is defined as a revolving armored structure on a warship that protects with one or more guns mounted within it. Okay, now obviously in games there isn't, you know, an entire warship hidden somewhere with only its little turrets poking out, I'm trying to make the point of it being armed. Now, I'm going to draw some lines on what is a sentry turret, and what is just a turret. First off, sentry turrets must work by themselves, with no NPC or player input, so no mounted guns, and no drones, like the drone operators in Batman Arkham Knight. It's 1985, Coke just released new Coke, Calvin and Hobbes just debuted in the newspapers, the Titanic was just rediscovered, the Unabomber claimed its first victim, it was good times. Good times. And Nintendo this year released their NES with their flagship game Super Mario Brothers. Now I can already hear you saying, Falcon, there's no, there's no sentry guns in Mario. Aha! Alright, I'm counting anything that A, shoots automatically, and B, has bullets or projectiles in it. So with this logic, Mr. Bullet Bill himself would be classified as a sentry gun. And that's the point I want to make. Not all sentry guns need to be so... deadly. This is what I would call... dum-dums. The, the dum-dum turrets don't care who you are or what you are, they just want to bust a nut every five seconds. And then, we move up in the spectrum just a little bit to meet what I like to call the clever smart boys. These turrets can tell the difference from friend and foe, and most of the time you're the foe. These would be your turrets from Half-Life or Fallout. They don't really have to have that lock on, 100% gonna make you insta-dead vibe to them though. Most of the, these turrets aren't much of a challenge to get rid of either, usually just a couple shots from a gun or even knocking them over will do the trick. But then, we get to the chads of the turret spectrum. The galaxy brains of the turret family. These things are different because they will mess you up. These guys are the lock-on and they will never miss you again kind of turrets. People wish they could have the patience and determination of some of these turrets. These are the turrets you were afraid of and take a lot of effort to avoid or just, you have to get multiple people just to take them down. Some examples of galaxy brain turrets are your Team Fortress 2 and Overwatch turrets. Your invincible obstacle turret from puzzle games like The Last Day. Rust is also a great example of having the galaxy brain chad turret. You know you have respect as a turret if they give you limited ammo in order to keep you from dominating a server. Seriously. Most of the time when people raid bases, they have to cheese the turret to shoot all of its ammo so it's safe to come out. That's respect if I've ever seen it. Now, there are also some slight deviants from this spectrum of turrets. Team Fortress 2 
Fortress 2's turrets are something special, because they break some fundamental rules of turrets. First, they can transform from a sentry gun to practically a mounted gun, using the Wrangler tool on Engineer, and... I don't know what madman decides to let the turret do this, but this turns this turret from a clever smart to a galaxy brain S tier. A turret that has 360 degrees of movement is rare in games. The only other example I can think of is Torbjorn's turret from Overwatch. Most of the time, the turret in a video game is limited to shooting what is directly in front of it. Now just because sentry guns usually shoot bullets, that isn't necessarily all the turret can shoot. That's right folks, some of these bad boys can shoot fire, missiles, water, if it can be shot they will do it. I like when a game throws more variety into their turrets, it makes them more interesting to fight. Instead of it just being the generic bullet turret, it gives you a lot of opportunities for interesting gameplay. There are a lot of great turrets. But in my opinion, there are only two that are on a different level than any other turrets. This was a triumph. The turrets in the Portal series aren't special in the way of mechanics or combat. They are just incredibly charming. When you meet a turret for the first time in Portal 2, it doesn't want to kill you or hurt you. Not because it can't, but because it won't. The I'm Different turret is loved by many fans of the game for it being so polite and witty. This doesn't mean that all the other turrets are just plain old turrets, either. Somehow, Valve made a very generic enemy ooze personality and charm. The little phrases and one-liners that these little guys say makes the player see them more than just a blind killing machine. They sound remorseful for their purpose. The fact that they can speak at all makes them very unique. They speak when they find you, lose you, and they even express pain when they are being destroyed. Heck, they even show fear when they know they're doomed. These things melt your heart, even though their job is to shoot it. These guys are unforgettable, and very lovable. Here we are, boys and girls, the king of all turrets. It strikes fear into even the biggest of enemies, and makes the other turrets look like broken nerf guns. The beast that could make an entire species extinct. All it takes is getting a little too close, and you would find your legs missing and your children being held hostage. What kind of turret would be capable of such atrocities, mayhem, and bloodshed? The Risk of Rain 2 turret. These bad boys start out innocent enough, just your standard turret doing normal turret things, you know? But it is what they can become that can shake an entire solar system to the core with fear. In Risk of Rain 2, you pick up a lot of items that give you buffs to your character, like increased firing speed, higher damage, and health, and even having all of your attacks explode. It's a really fun game, 10 out of 10, would recommend. But when you play the game as the engineer, things get a little more interesting. Every single item you pick up is also applied to your two turrets. Why only two, you ask? Because if you had three out at the same time, they could challenge the power of a dwarf star. These things, when you're into a deep run of the game, become so absurdly powerful that I can stand AFK for 10 minutes with hordes of enemies coming from my big, broad shoulders and none of them 
can lay a finger on me. These things in a late game can be only scratched by the most powerful enemies in the game. They eat thunder and shoot lightning. No, no, I'm not joking. You can get a power-up that quite literally makes them shoot lightning. These things could body the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe in a week. The only thing that would make these things more powerful is if they could move. Oh no freaking way! When these things get enough power-ups to transcend the power of a supernova, and then you let them move around, you are real glad that they're on your side because at this point you're taking orders from them. I feel horrible whenever I complete a stage on this game because I don't bring the turrets with me when I teleport. They stay behind and presumably devastate the entire planet in my absence. I would not be surprised at all if I returned to that same stage in like 30 minutes and I would see the entire place on fire, with thousands of bodies piled around these two small turrets. I think you get the picture now. These things are triple S tier turrets that could possibly mean the end of all life in the universe if they ever gain sentience. They are without a doubt, the king of the turrets. Games would not be the same without the sentry turret. Some of them can feel a little generic and some can be unforgettable. I think that they have a special place in people's hearts. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a like. Maybe even a subscribe if you really liked it. If you didn't like it, please let me know why in the comments so I can do better next time. We got the new Discord server set up, so maybe you could stop by and say hi. Till next time, folks.